It's just a blast of pressurized air, but in the wrong hands, a fast and dangerous high. He's like, my brain is telling me to kill myself and I don't want to die. A fix is close. It's easy and cheap. As the nearest big box store. You can buy as much as you want. Nobody's going to question you. But that first huff could also be your last. And I remember that day. It's like seeing a movie. For Tomoko Townsley, the images are haunting and unforgettable. It was a few days before Thanksgiving when she found the body of her husband, Jason. I walked in. He was doubled over. There were several cans on the floor. He was surrounded by cans of computer keyboard cleaner. Even their six-year-old son had feared the worst. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he said, he asked me, is my dad dead? I had to break his whole world. I'm so sorry, Tomoko. <laughs> Broke his world. <laughs> Tomoko is a former photographer for Fox 9 who now works in the public information department for Hennepin County. She's also a friend. This is the story she never imagined she'd be sharing. Um, he was very sweet, very generous, and very funny. And uh, he, was a very, uh, he was a very good parent to our son. Their story, their love affair, began years ago in television news. Tomoko met Jason Townsley at a small market TV station in Indiana, where he was a control room director. Their courtship lasted four months. The marriage, almost 20 years. You know, it was hard for him to handle life. After the birth of their son six years ago, Jason began drinking got sober, but soon and in secret found a new addiction, huffing compressed air. When he woke up, he couldn't even utter a word. He was making noises, but not forming any words. And he grabbed me both by both wrists like this. And he, he finally started saying, don't leave me, don't leave me. His addiction eventually led to their separation, but Jason couldn't stop huffing, even in the presence of their son. And unprompted, he said, I saw my dad drinking water out of the can with the red straw. The red straw on a can of Ultra Duster. Come to find out, Jason was driving every day from his townhome in Eden Prairie to the local Menards where there's a large display of Ultra Duster in the middle of the store. A two-pack sells for $7.49. Receipts show Jason was buying 10 cans every day. We sat here. I said, if you keep up what you're doing, I'm afraid you're going to die. And, and our son will have to grow up without his dad. Jason Townsley died at 42, cause of death, acute volatile inhalant toxicity. Huffing had caused a heart attack, what's known as sudden sniffing death syndrome. And the classic description of this is the young person who is using an inhalant, uh, whether it's a, a, a keyboard dusting product or something else, that is caught in the act by a mom or dad and has a sudden rush of adrenaline, and that rush of adrenaline can cause an arrhythmia, and that can be fatal. Dr. Travis Olives is with HCMC's Poison Control Center, where they get about 300 calls a year about inhalants. It's estimated more than 1,500 consumer products can be used to get high. But the most popular these days, by far, are the varieties of compressed air and computer keyboard cleaner. They contain a chemical known as difluoroethane, or DFE. The products do contain a warning label, and some even add a bittering agent to deter huffing. But it doesn't stop everyone. There's legitimately an intoxicating effect from the inhalants that we're talking about. I think the best predictor of drug use is what's in your best friend's pocket. 
or the internet. On YouTube, you'll find dozens of videos of people huffing compressed air, hallucinating, staggering, and passing out. The high lasts only a few minutes. Is it possible to have a fatal overdose in your first try on one of these? I think that it is. The Fox 9 investigators made a public records request of the Hennepin County Medical Examiner and discovered 16 people who have died in just the last five years from inhaling products with difluoroethane. To our surprise, they're not teenagers. They're almost all men in their 30s and 40s. Hangovers suck, and I get them all the time because I drink all the time. <laughs> There's Bill Young, a Twin Cities comedian. Tim Fort had a degree in aerospace engineering, had appeared on America's Got Talent. His huffing death was ruled a suicide. Sergei Princev, a dentist who got hooked on nitrous oxide, laughing gas, then began using 3M dust remover. He was found dead in his apartment with a can in his hand. The Fox 9 investigators also found a half dozen cases of people huffing compressed air while driving, like Sergei Kondolovsky, who killed three people last summer along I-94 in Wisconsin. But in Minnesota, difluoroethane isn't even covered under current DWI laws, a dangerous loophole. And then there's Randy Anderson, who'd been huffing since he was 11. I didn't know he was huffing. His sister Michelle found out when he came to stay with her in Duluth to get clean. Randy would even take video of himself huffing. This is one of his last. He would end each video with an apology. It was almost exactly a year ago that Randy Anderson died. Thing is, he was about ready to get help. He was going to go into treatment the next day, but he wanted to get high one last time. So he went up the road here to Walmart, bought a couple of cans of Ultra Duster, and came to this park in West St. Paul. Went into this porta potty to get out of the elements, and it was in here that they found his body. He said his, his choice, though, his favorite was the computer duster. Computer duster? He said it was inexpensive and easy to access. What do you think about that? It makes me sick. It makes me angry. Under Minnesota law, the abuse of toxic substances for intoxication is a misdemeanor. Stores that sell such products must post a conspicuous warning sign that it can be harmful or fatal. But in all the stores we went to, including that big display at Menards, we never saw a warning sign. Come to find out, with compressed air, it may not be required. That's because the health department tells the Fox 9 investigators difluoroethane has never been declared a toxic substance. Yet another dangerous loophole. I did wonder, I did wonder, I did wonder if anybody saw him. No. I did wonder if anybody ever noticed him coming back there day after day, buying 10 cans at a time. I did wonder that. We wondered that as well. So we went back to Menards to ask them. Every day we buy 10 canisters of this, of all canisters. It's unlikely a warning sign alone would have stopped Jason Townsley or Randy Anderson or any of the others. But their families all wish they would have seen the warning signs earlier. The ordinary looking cans of compressed air. Their only hope is maybe it'll keep someone from even starting. I'm like, you're not alone. You have me. I love you so much. It screws with people's heads.